Hello and thanks for checking out this video where I'm going to show you how to make some super simple but really cool lights. So since my last video I was trying to think how I could actually make them look visually more pleasing so I was watching some videos on YouTube like this one and maybe this one and yeah cool they make your videos look really smart but then you start adding up how much those lights cost and it's like thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars. Um, it's too much. I'm not going to do that. I'm the circuit helper. So I'm going to make my own lights. So I'm going to turn this into... As you can see, things look much better. And it's all controlled using my mobile phone. And really, you can build it too with just free components and maybe 10 minutes of your time. Super simple. I'm going to use a soldering iron, but you don't even need to do that. So here, I have probably too bright for the camera. Let me reduce the brightness. A um, homemade light, basically. Um, you can see the individual LEDs, maybe, but maybe not. It's a Cobb RGB strip in a um, diffuser. It's actually got a um, battery pack in here, a USB battery pack. And it's completely controlled by mobile. So I can completely change the brightness. I can add gradients. I can do all sorts of cool stuff simply using this WLED um, application that's free to download and install. Honestly, you can really get some cool lights in like five minutes. So keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So let's quickly take a look at the schematic of what we're actually going to build today. It's super simple. And actually one of these components is optional. Really, we have an RGB LED strip. And if you look at it, you can actually see that it's got three connections. There's plus five volts. There's D in or data in. And there's a minus or zero volts. So basically, we need to add 5 volts to our LED strip between the positive and the minus, and then the D in goes to our ESP32. The pin on the ESP32 is not really that important. I've chosen pin 14, um, but that's pretty much at random. Some pins you can't use, but actually the WLED software really shows you how to do that anyway. It won't let you select pins you're not allowed to use. The reason I'm using this little power delivery board is because, um, one, it's pretty difficult to connect to a USB connector. You know, I didn't have a breakout board, but I did have this power delivery board, and it allows me to keep the battery pack enabled all the time. It has another advantage, although it's not needed in this circuit. It actually allows you to set the output voltage from USB-C from 5 to 20 volts. That's, that's not needed for this 5-volt um, RGB strip I'm using here. But if, for example, you had a 12 volt um, RGB strip, you could actually use it to power that strip. So that's pretty convenient. And that's all you need, really. And they're just connected very simply. So let's go and have a look at the lab now. Where we're actually going to solder this up and get it installed. To install WLED, it's really easy. Um, you basically connect your ESP32 to your USB port on your computer. Um, I've gone to install.wled.me. Um, you can only use this in certain browsers. For sure, Chrome works. Firefox does not. I go to install. So now I have an option to install WLED. Yes, I want to install it. it takes a little while. Look, it's erasing whatever was on there. It's a new one, so you know there's nothing to erase there, but. Okay, so it says install complete, click next. Now you have to set up your Wi-Fi. Don't skip this because it becomes problematic. You need to select your network. Once you're connected, you can visit the device to make sure it's working. Obviously, there's no lights connected to this, so you're not going to see anything. But here is the actual um, control panel. It doesn't look as good on your computer as it does on your phone, actually. But there you go. That's all set up now. We'd be able to turn lights on and off. I'll set all that up when I've soldered all the connections. 
so this component is basically it's it's a, i'd call it a voltage regulator but that's not the correct terminology it's basically like a voltage controller so it takes a USB C input and by setting those little dip switches there they've got a piece of captain tape on at the minute you can actually set the output voltage um of the board so for this particular example we want five volts so when i'm going to plug my USB C in i need to set those switches and the guide is here um, on how to set this for five volts so five volts means all three switches are switched off and if i wanted 20 volts for example it would be zero one one okay so that's really easy but these are five volt strips so we're going to be setting it for five volts let me have a look they're all set for one at the moment so that would give me an undisclosed output I don't know what that would be let's set that now means I'm going to switch them all in the opposite direction and then I'm going to test it with a multimeter okay I've got a USB battery pack plug that in plug that into this board board lights up so that's perfectly adequate for powering my um, light strip USB-C can do a, a few amps so now I'm basically going to connect the LED strip to this power delivery board. So the red of the LED strip goes to the VCC. Obviously that's my 5 volts out. My white wire, which is the ground wire on this LED strip, is going to go to the ground terminal here. And I'm not going to connect the green at the moment because that's the data line. Now to connect the ESP32, this also needs 5 volts and ground. And I should warn you actually, um, the pinout on the ESP32 really depends on the dev kit you get. So on this particular board, you can see that at the top left of the ESP32, as you're looking at it, the V in and ground pins are next to each other. That's not the same on every ESP32. So if you remember the schematic I showed you at the start of the video, that didn't actually have ground and V in next to each other like that. So you really need to check the specific um, layout of your board to know where to connect this to. So I'm just checking if those terminals VCC and ground at the top and the bottom are actually connected to the VCC and ground or the red and the white wires um, shown and they are actually. So I'm going to use those terminals to connect to the ESP32 rather than trying to piggyback on the, the red and white wires. And now I have the wires connected to power the ESP32. I bring it in. I'm going to flip it upside down, making sure I don't forget that the pins are now on the opposite side to what I'm expecting. Um, that can cause some confusion. And then basically I just get them soldered in place. And we're almost done. Just got to connect the green wire and the job's finished basically. So all that I really need to do now is just assemble the actual device. And that involves sticking the roller to the lid and mounting this diffuser strip. So... The LED strip itself is self-adhesive, so that's no problem. It's just going to stick to the aluminium, but I need to get that to um, stick to the bottom of the lid. As you can see, I've actually damaged the LED strip, so I'll need to fix that. But first, I'm going to put some holes through the um, aluminium profile. This will allow me to mount it to the lid um, using a couple of nylon screws, so really simple. Of course, because the LEDs are going on top of this, you don't see these screws. Um, obviously it looks a little bit untidy because the strip actually bumps up over the screws. Basically the diffuser on top of the strip hides all that so it's not an issue at all. I'm using nylon because basically the ESP32 is going to be underneath and um, I don't want to short it out. So now I'm just putting the strip into the uh, aluminium profile. I've not got things lined up very nice because the strip actually pokes out at the top and it's a bit short at the bottom. But, you know, there's much better designs to actually make these lamps. If you look on Thingiverse and you have access to a 3D printer, you get some amazing um, sort of lamps you can use. 
but I really just wanted something that could house the USB battery, be able to sort of stand up on its own. So this is pretty cool because the battery's heavy. I can actually get the, the box to stand up sort of vertical or horizontal, depending on how I want the lamp. So there, I've just fixed that wire that was broken. And now I'm just going to solder that onto the ESP32. And then the, the thing's finished. I can stick it all together and put it in the box. I've kind of just wedged everything inside. Um, I do actually have some double-sided tape in there um, now. And yeah, everything's relatively stable. So let's just summarize this video. We used an ESP32 microcontroller and we uploaded the WLED application to it. That takes about two minutes. We used a USB power bank and a little PCB that I bought from Amazon that basically keeps the power bank switched on and provides a nice regulated five volts to power your ESP32 and your LED strip. So the LED strip is an RGB strip. All the LEDs are embedded within a diffuser. So they look pretty cool. And by connecting it up to the ESP32, we can actually control it wirelessly on the mobile using that WLED application. And what I didn't show you earlier, which I can now, is yes, you can see a gradient here, but there's all sorts of pretty cool um, animations and crazy stuff you can do um, just by clicking on your mobile. So I've just got my mobile here and I'm just flicking through the maybe 100 different options that we can actually click on. So that's really cool, cheap to make, and I really urge you to do that. They're pretty cool. So in the next video, I'm actually going to show you how to build the key light. So the key light's the one that's basically illuminating my face right now. And it's pretty cool. I'm using a warm LED and a cold LED. And I'm using pulse width modulation to actually control the color temperature. Again, it's controlled by WLED. So with that light, we can go from a really warm, hot yellow to a really ice cold, like I'm in a you know a hospital or something like that. So I'll show you how to make that. Again, all on WLED. Um, pretty cool. And I'll see you in the next video.